Now, historically, this church has had a history of sending and supporting people overseas to overseas mission. And we've got a new opportunity within our midst this morning. So I'm going to invite Tina to come and tell you a little bit more about it. Let's welcome Tina. Hello, everyone. hope you're all well. Um, so uh, since I was 10, I'm 21 now, I have always had the dream to become a missionary. Um, I've always had the passion to travel to all sorts of different countries over the world to tell people about Jesus. Uh, but although I knew what was in my heart, I had no idea what it was going to look like or, or how it was going to pan out. But all I knew was that a seed had been planted, but it was yet to grow and flourish. Last year, I went away to Northern Ireland to do an internship with a Causeway Coast Vineyard Church. I spent 10 months working for them voluntarily. I basically did anything they asked me to. I helped to organise conferences, learnt lots about worship and production, worked in the offices every day. And alongside all of that, I also did a course called Encounter School of Mission, uh, it was here that I learned to share my faith with people that I'd never met before. I offered to pray for them and sometimes gave them a word from God if I felt like I had one for them. And I'd never done that before, so it was good practice. Um, our team went out onto the streets of Coleraine every week and I really grew my faith as I saw God work in other people's lives too. Um, I'd never really done anything like that again, either before I moved, so it was quite terrifying, uh, but an amazing experience. Uh, this then culminated with me going on a mission trip to Norway of March this year as a part of my course. And again, I got to speak in uh, three different churches and also got to minister to people that I'd never met before. It felt really emotional being there and it felt like the seed had been planted and was starting to grow as a part of my dream I'd had as a child. Uh, and I just... Um, felt so blessed by God as I knew he was starting that work in me. Um, as my time in Northern Ireland came to an end, I knew that there was something more for me. I had originally thought I would stay on for another year. I thought that before I even moved there and I wasn't budging. Um, <laughs> but it turns out that was not in God's plan and I quickly learned that. Um, I was really confused as I didn't know what was next, where I was going to go, but I just had to trust that God did have a plan and I had to trust that he knew better than I did. Um, I just couldn't shake that strong sense off my heart, though, that I was called to go overseas to meet new people, help them and tell them about Jesus. Um, obviously, my mum and dad were praying about it too, as I definitely couldn't do it on my own. And then one day, my mum actually called me and asked me if I'd considered going on the Logos Hope ship. And I had no idea what that was, uh, but my mum and dad both felt like they had a picture from God uh, that they wanted to give to me and that I was to pray about it as well. Uh, so I was looking it up on their website and started to get really excited about what I was seeing. Everything I read seemed to resonate with me. It seemed like after years of waiting, not knowing uh, that God was finally showing me my future. Um, after praying and sensing God's leading, I began a very long application process and multiple interviews from April to June this year, right to the end of my Northern Ireland journey. And then finally, two days before I left Northern Ireland to come home, they called me to say that although it normally takes weeks to process their final decision, as all my information has to go through the main team in Germany, they wanted me to know straight away that I had been selected to join the ship. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just so excited and so overjoyed. I was like shaking. I was like, this is not actually happening, but it felt real. Um, I felt like God was saying that I had made the right choice to step back from what I originally thought I wanted and that I had put my trust in him and I let him show me what was actually meant to be next. 
So I will be leaving Whitstable and Riverside to begin my new adventure at the end of January 2023 next year to join the Logos Hope team. So I have about three or so months left here with you guys. Um, Logos Hope is part of the ship ministry operation mobilization uh, known as OM, uh, the shortened version. Um, you may have heard of them but it may also be very new to you today. So with the lights down, I would love to show you um, a video that just blesses me and just show you guys what, what they do. OM Ships International is a non-denominational Christian organization dedicated to bringing knowledge, help, and hope to the people of the world. Since 1970, our vessels have welcomed more than 45 million visitors up the gangways in over 150 different countries and territories. For many, a visit to one of our ships is the first time they've ever had access to good quality literature at a price that they can afford. And this attraction often brings thousands of visitors to the ship each day. Our current ship, Logos Hope, features the world's largest floating book fair, and with over 5,000 titles of Christian, educational, and children's books, there's something for the whole family. Many people without access to education have learned vital skills and have been able to enhance their lives through a purchase from the onboard book fair. While in port, the crew also come alongside the people of the country in practical ways, providing water purifiers, eyeglasses, library projects, and more in an effort to share the love of God in a tangible way. God has used books from the OM Ships Ministry and the practical service of Logos Hope's crew to impact countless lives for His glory. Oh, well, I always get emotional when I watch those because it's just oh, it's just incredible what they do. Uh, so this is the ship I will actually be living on. I've been on boats and ferries, never been on a ship in my life. So something new, I'm giving it a go. Um, so Logos Hope carries around 400 volunteers from uh, almost 60 different countries. Uh, and all the volunteers are mostly ages from 18 to 25 as I said, I will be joining in January and I have actually committed to a two-year period to begin with. So it's no less. So it's definitely two years. Could be longer. Um, so this is what life on board the ship will look like for me. I will be working five eight-hour shifts a week um, well, on the ship every week. And this will either be in the galley, which is the kitchen team, or I will be on the cleaning team known as the angels. Who, want, who wouldn't want to be called an angel? Um, working in the book fair, the international cafe, on deck, or in the engine room. So many options. Um, I don't know where I will be put until I get there, but I'm guessing it probably won't be in the engine room for everyone's sake. So if I am dad, I will be phoning you. Um, one day a week, I will go ashore and work with the people from the area or the country that we are docked in. Uh, this is called Sea Day, which stands for Connection Day, which I really like. Um, this could include giving free eye tests, building wells, going into schools, prisons or hospitals, plus so much more. I probably don't even know half of what I'm going to be getting into. Um, the volunteers do dramas for the local community. They offer to pray for them and really do try and show the love of Jesus through everything that they do. I will also have the opportunity to lead worship and be a part of the bands there as there are services and small groups on board the ship so my passion for worship can be used too, thankfully. Um, I will also be in lots of clubs and will be studying as well. Um, I will have one day off a week where I won't be working so I can have some downtime, whatever that might look like. Um, everyone who's on board the ship, from the volunteers to the families who have chosen to live on there, um, right through to the captain, has to raise their own support and no one gets a wage. 
Um, I'm currently working to raise money for all the things that I need to pay before I go, like for all the vaccinations I need, um, a couple of months sponsorship up front, all my training costs, the airfare to get me to wherever the ship is at the end of January, and I also want to put enough away as well so I can contribute to my own sponsorship every month too. Um, I have been asked to raise £900 a month and I know that sounds a lot. I almost fell off my chair in my interview when I was told. Um, but just to put into context, last year's cohort had to find £600 a month. But with the cost of living and the fuel prices um, getting higher now, they've had to increase it to £900 uh, just to keep the ship viable. Uh, none of the money I raise goes to me. It simply goes to the running of the ship to enable me to be there and to be part of the mission. Um, I'm sharing this today to ask you to pray and consider uh, whether you would like to partner with me and support the mission of Logos Hope. If you don't feel you can support me financially, then please support me through prayer as that is equally if not more important. Um, I have never been away from my family uh, without seeing them um, for longer than four months, and that was hard enough. So that is the part I especially need prayer for, as I am incredibly, incredibly close to my family. So it's going to be hard, but I know I'm meant to go on the ship, so it will. God will make it work. Um, I also get very travel sick, uh, <laughs> so I'm making a big commitment here, but prayers for that would be hugely appreciated, as that little area is something I am not looking forward to at all. I will have my sickness spans and we will get through it. Um, but also, I will need ongoing prayer while I'm away, and I would love to keep you all in touch with prayer updates. Uh, Leanne, who is in charge of the kids, has asked me to keep in touch with the Kingfishers so they can learn about mission and follow my journey as well. So there is no pressure at all, but if you think you might like to support me either financially um, or through prayer, or both, then please do come and chat to me after the service. All I will do today is take your details. Don't need to know anything else, just an email address, and that is all. Uh, then I will be in touch in the coming weeks with my ship web page when that is all set up and ready. Um, I'll then be able to send you a link, and through that you can decide what uh, the support will look like. Um, I will be in the cafe after the service on one of the high tables, so do feel free to come and chat to me and ask me any questions that you might have. Uh, if you don't yet know me, I'd love to meet you, so do come and say hi. Um, I really do appreciate you all listening to me this morning. Riverside is my church family, and I'm so thankful to God that I have such a strong base to launch from. So thank you.